This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. All right, good morning, everyone. It is uh, Saturday morning, February 2nd. This is one of the uh, regular uh, Board of Finance workshops. Uh, this morning, we're going to hear from the uh, IT department, uh, followed by uh, uh, the Board of Ed. Uh, Mr. Hallian has a conflict and won't be able to join us today. Um, with that, Alex, would you like to take us through the IT budget? Sure. Where would would you like me to start on the um, capital request? Uh, we generally do the operating first. Operating. And the capital, okay. You know. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here to present a brief overview of our 2024-2025 budget. Um, on the uh, personnel full timeline, um, overall labor costs have increased by 3% um, meeting contractual obligations. Um, this also includes a 3% uptick in the overtime line um to uh address operational demands um effectively as we have them um, in addition to the adjustments in our labor um, it's important to note that our, our maintenance contract line remains unchanged uh, we recognize the importance of consistent and reliable um, projections for our operations and we've allocated resources to ensure that um, our contracts continue to support our infrastructure effectively. Uh, you're also going to see a 17% increase uh, in expenses related to software and consultants. This adjustment is primarily attributed to the purchase of new GASB um, compliance software uh, investing in this technology is crucial for staying in line with regulatory standards and ensuring accurate financial reporting. And our MUNIS <clears throat> line will also remain unchanged for 24-25. Is that a contract, Alice? MUNIS? Yeah. So it, it, it is, it, it's, there's not a contract in place for it. it it's our, we get a pro forma quote every year for yeah. the services we use. I'm sure at some point we probably signed an agreement with Tyler Technologies, but yeah. uh, it hasn't been refreshed in a while. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, let's kind of work in, in reverse order. Yeah. So the, the Munis line uh, in 2022, 23 was a little over sixty thousand dollars, and then for the current fiscal year it was bumped up to eighty, and you want to keep it at eighty. Correct. Um, but when I'm looking at the uh, the monthly reports, halfway through this year, we're only at about 38%. That is so correct. So do you feel there, that it's... The billing happens with Tyler. The billing will happen at the end of... Um, I said the end of June, we'll get the big bill, which is around 40, 42,000. Um, and the other half of that bill goes to Board of Ed. Actually, the entire bill is near 80 but we, we split the bill. About 42 then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And that has consistently been going up. Mm -hmm. um, we're also utilizing more modules out of uh, Munis um, and making more effective use of uh, the program to um, automate a lot more of our financial processes. Well, didn't we upgrade a year or two ago? We did. Yeah. yeah. We did. Mm -hmm. But we've also started using um, Tyler Content Management which is digital document system. So invoices, um, invoices, checks, things that we traditionally would have printed out are now stored in a database as a, as a digital image. Um, and we're also backing that database up to here. Um, but it's quite large, it's already grown. Um, and, and I think Ingrid can attest to the fact that we went from what was mostly a, a paper-driven technology to everybody having scanners on their desk and, and digitizing documents. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and you mentioned a 17% in uh, software. Where exactly in the line okay. items is that reflected? Um, in the line... That was the hardware, software, labor. Hardware, software, labor right. line. 
Okay, because it looks like it's exactly the same, at least in the version that I have. Uh, it goes from 108 to 126. 126.9. Yeah. Oh, then what we received in our packets is different from what's in, in the actual yeah, budget. Yeah, okay. So it's 126. Yep. Got it. And then we also have uh, dues and expenses change to grant match. Could you tell us a little bit about that? No. I don't see dues and expenses. <laughs> Does everybody have a different document than I, what I received from my What package? did you get? Yeah, I'm not sure what you got. We, okay. <laughs> it that was, she's reading from the backup. But I think those two lines are combined. Yeah, they were combined. That's right. Yeah, yeah we'll sorry. It. We try to make it easier, <laughs> not harder. Mm -hmm. Our, um, any additional questions on the? Why don't we go on to capital, Alex? Okay. Uh, so our capital request, uh, we were able to reduce uh, versus what we expected at, to ask. Um, we were able to reduce that by 10 from our previous request, um, around 10. And uh, we're still uh, in year three of our data center lease, so that that will um, go towards that purchase. This is the 65, just yes. to make sure we're all the same numbers, right? Yes, okay. 65, correct. So that's really just a lease that we're already obligated to? Yes. But nothing to trim there. Okay. <coughs> How are we doing with cyber? Do we need anything extra? Or, or is that what you're doing now? Is that enough? I mean, it's never, <laughs> it's never enough. Unfortunately, cyber, it's, it's never enough. Um, we've begun. Um, there, I am involved in the regional level um, in a, for Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Uh, for Region 2 specifically, I'm the um, Emergency Support Function 17 Cybersecurity. Right so, okay. yeah, uh, so we're we're working on getting um, federal grant money down to our level. Uh, the state is still working on it. We're hoping to get some of that for North Haven. But in addition, <laughs> SCROG has already gone out and been awarded a grant for um, cybersecurity over the next three years, uh, North Haven will participate next year in, uh, next fiscal year, in, um, in an audit which will produce results that we can then take advantage of a variety of programs at a 50% discount. So if they find we need some specialized software or some more multi-factor than what we're doing, we can then go out to <clears throat> procure those uh, services at a match from Scrog for the next, the program I believe is supposed to go on for three years. So <clears throat> three years, that's yeah. right. So we're trying to take advantage of that. Um, <clears throat> can we do more always, but yeah, yeah it's, we do so with, with with what we're given and, and working towards um, a complete plan, putting a lot of policy in place to protect the town should we have an event. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Alex? Uh, just, an, just a comment. <clears throat> so Alex does such a great job for us that even during our rating agency calls with S&P 500, I have to profile our cybersecurity practices, and uh, S and P 500 has told me that they're among the best that they've seen. But to Alex's point, we can always do more, but we're right at the, right at the top of where we need to be in comparison to other municipalities. So, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. Mike. Anything else from the board, Browns? Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, next up we have the uh, Board of Ed. We have our superintendent of schools, Mr. Patrick Sturk, as well as Christian Strickland, who is our chief operating officer. I also see the chairman, uh, Mr. Ron Bathrick here and some other members of the board.
Hard copies? Uh, most of the board should have their report, right? Just yeah. to the presentation, if you're... Oh, yeah, yeah if you have our... Yeah, yeah, we'll take those, please. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. you're cutting costs you somehow staple this without actually using a staple mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> double-sided as well yep anytime you're ready thank you all right good morning North Haven Board of Finance members uh, today Christian Strickland and I will be presenting the 2024 2025 budget on behalf of the North Haven Board of Education in creating this budget, the Board of Education was committed to maintaining these priorities. Maintain the district's focus on improving achievement and providing extracurricular opportunities for all students. Meet all contractual obligations and CSDE mandates. Utilize the vision of a graduate to drive budget planning. And to hire and appropriate staff to ensure that all students have a meaningful and robust learning experience. So the increase to the 24-25 school year is $4,544,727, which brings the annual Board of Education budget to $66,188,680. This represents a 7.37% increase from last year's approved budget. This increase will meet the district's contractual obligations, healthcare benefits, unfunded state mandates, and tuition for out of district special education schools. It also covers the new positions and the high priority capital projects that will be highlighted later in this presentation. I will now turn the next few slides over to Christian and he'll provide an overview of the major budget drivers. Good morning, Board of Finance members, and thank you for this opportunity to speak. This first slide indicates an overall percentage increase of salaries at 57.8%, our non-salary payroll at 1.5%, and benefits increasing at 17.8%, making up a total of 77% of the total proposed budget. Respectfully, when adding in all other non-discretionary categories, such as utilities, facilities, rentals and leases, transportation, insurance, and the non-discretionary portion of professional services, it increases the non-discretionary portion of this proposed budget to 96% of the total budget, which is within line with last year. So Christian, how much of the, the employee, the salary numbers you just gave us are the two new hires in total with benefits? Uh, the, the special education teacher and the- um, There's a school psychologist, right? School psychologist. Psychologist. How much is that all together? Uh, so the specific figure is probably, I, I don't have it Ballpark. in front. 150,000. For both of them? Uh, salaries, correct. So what's, the, what's the benefit burden usually? Ballpark, probably looking about 30 to 40,000 additional on each. Okay, thanks. Good. These next two slides are to provide a visual representation of the overall breakdown of the budget. This first slide chart shows the percentage uh, by dollars. <coughs> and this is the same chart by percentage overall increase. <coughs> With this particular slide, it shows the percentage increase of each larger category. And there are a couple of items of note that I wish to point out. The first is overall salaries, which is increased by 4.94% which is being driven by the addition of one elementary school special education teacher requested at Ridge Road Elementary School. The second is the elementary school psychologist for our therapeutic learning service program at Montelis Elementary School. Following this, our overall benefits line had increased a total of 10.56%. Uh, this increase is primarily driven by the current estimated increase by Brown and Brown for our medical insurance costs next year. I would like to let the board know that these numbers are the figures presented to us as we built this budget. So Christian, um, I'm sure you don't have it today, but maybe you can provide to the board at a later time. 
I'd like to see an analysis of your reserves in the medical insurance fund, please. <coughs> If, if I could just add to that, I, I'd love to see a list of all of your special funds and their balances, not just medical and, and dental, but all of them. Workers' comp, special ed, capital projects, non-lapsing fund, and cafeteria fund. So, thank you. Our professional service line has a percentage increase of 20.64%. This increase is being driven by required additional services for our special education population, our district special education tuition costs, <coughs> as well as the unfunded state mandate science of reading legislation. The final two percentage increase I would like to point out are in our overall facilities with a percentage increase of 32.66. This is a result of the additional $200,000 requested for the state mandated HVAC study and assessment due to be completed by all school districts by January 1st, 2025. This inspection will also need to be completed for all six of our schools every five years currently to meet compliance. So I'm sorry, Christian, maybe you said, does the 200 cover all the schools or just a couple of them? It covers all of them. Oh, okay. So is that considered a facilities expense or is that a capital request? That is um, in our uh, repair line. Four three zero OC right now. Okay, because I, I thought that was the two hundred thousand dollar capital request. Okay, so that's separate. So, Christian, uh, the other item, the hundred thousand. <clears throat> I know this is. Uh, I actually saw the article or paper. I think Cheshire. Cheshire, Cheshire asked for a waiver, and they didn't. They got turned down or something, right? Uh, we did as well. We did. Okay. So when does that? Go into effect. When does the state require that we meet currently? Actually, 25, 26. So not another year. Mm -hmm. okay. We just um, put a hundred thousand dollars in to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, Linda and her team are taking a look at curriculums right now, and they can yeah. run anywhere between four hundred thousand and one point five million. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you want to go back? To the previous question, um, in our combined other purchase services line is an overall percentage increase of 13.9%. This increase is driven by the inclusion of five priority capital projects we've included in the operating budget this year that we will highlight later in this presentation. So I know we just hit on a little bit of this, but I, I do want to touch base because it is a, a large portion of our increase. Um, so one of the mandates this year, well, both mandates combined are $300,000 added to this budget. Uh, $200,000 is earmarked, as Christian said, for the HVAC study, which will be required um, to be completed by the end of this calendar year and then every five years <coughs> forward. And just as a reminder, the $200,000 is only for the study. If the study reveals any repairs or anything that we, the district, would be responsible for. So that would be an additional cost moving forward. And, and Patrick, just to clarify, that's in addition to the air quality studies that have to take place every year. Correct. Got it. Yep. And there's $100,000 that I just uh, said to the chairman that will be utilized uh, to assist in purchasing the new K-5 reading program. The legislation is only for kindergarten through third grade. However, we do not expect our students and teachers to bounce between two different curriculums for K-3 and four or five. So we're looking for a K to five consistency. <coughs> it's what's best for our students and our teachers. Um, as I said before, the legislation does not go in effect till 25, 26. However, in designing this budget, uh, the Board of Education believed it was important to include additional funding uh, just to create less of a burden in future budget years. So an additional $525,000 was included in this year's budget to appropriately fund the special education tuition line. This amount is needed as a result of students who have moved into North Haven, but were placed in an out of district special education school prior to their arrival here in North Haven. Um, and this amount of $525,000 only accounts for the students who are currently in our district. And I think as the board well knows, anyone can move in at any point in time to our town. Many people do, we're a highly desirable district as well as a, uh, a great reputation as far as our special education services. So um, 
at any point when students and families move here, the responsibility falls to the district to pay for any out of district tuition and How transportation. How many students do we have now? How many special, students do we have now? In special ed, you don't know? In it's special ed yeah. total? Yeah. Um, well, anywhere 10% of our students. But those students are in our district as well as out of our district, so it's a come up. Okay. Patrick, it wasn't clear from the, from the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, the point was made that this 525 is gross to the excess uh, cost reimbursement. So is that consistent with how you presented the budget last year? I, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to go back and look no, at that. It's not. So it's not. No, we did not. It was net last year. Okay. It was net. Okay. Thank you. And, and the reason for the, the change? It is a risk to include it. Uh, we're never <clears throat> guaranteed what we're getting from the state. Even this year, it decreased um, yeah. from 70% to 68%, which is nominal. Some districts got hit harder. But um, we're trying to eliminate as much risk as possible in this budget. So would a compromise be to be somewhere in between Potentially, zero sure. and 70%? Sure. But I at the time, I wouldn't the, use zero, but I get the idea. Well, but that's what they're doing. <laughs> I, I, I know. They're using zero. Yeah. And right. the alternative is 70%. So right. I think somewhere in the 50 to 60% might be really And cool. the board chose during their budget workshops to move this budget forward um, at 7.3% and with the possibility of, of different avenues uh, to take if needed. This line is running over this year, correct? I think that's my recollection. That, that is correct. Yeah. How much is running over? Any idea? Annualized? I can provide you with that specific figure. Yeah, that'd be good to know. Thank you. Just a couple more slides if the board doesn't mind. Um, so the CSD's unfunded mandates combined with a special ed tuition uh, com leads us to $825,000, which represents 1.24% of this year's requested increase. Uh, without this cost, the increase would fall to 6.13%. Christian mentioned a little bit about our two new positions in the budget, a school psychologist at Mono East Elementary School and a special education teacher at Ridge Road Elementary School. Uh, the school psychologist would be dedicated to the students who participate in the therapeutic learning services. Uh, considering this program is for students who require additional counseling and support, a dedicated psychologist is needed for this population. And the additional special ed teacher at Ridge Road would serve the entire school. Uh, the overall population at Ridge continues to grow, and as a result, a percentage of those students do qualify for special education services. Uh, this teacher would alleviate the high number of students and hours that our current special education teachers um, are, are responsible for, and the additional teacher would allow for more direct and supportive services. Christian's going to talk a little bit about the high priority capital projects. As I mentioned, this year in our operating budget, we have included $200,000 in order to address five capital high priority projects. The first is one of our chillers. Uh, which is part of the HVAC system at our high school, which is nearing its end of life. $40,000 is a hard quote provided by Mr. Diana. Uh, this would need to eventually be replaced in order to keep the HVAC system operational. At the high school, our tennis courts are in desperate need of resurfacing. Uh, this, uh, we will get us, the $45,000 is enough just to resurface. It would actually not address all of the tracks, etc., within the courts themselves. $75,000 you see, and I want to just be specific that uh, this is actually a capital question in regards to technology. These are technology switches, not on and off switches, but are actually the operational pieces that you put in to maintain your internet integrity. Uh, and they are nearing the end of life, and this would start a replacement cycle for our schools that need to have these system switches. When these go, when these go down, we're effectively using some of the older pieces of equipment that we've held on to in order to address that need. $15,000 is requested to replace the front door at Montuiz Elementary School. This would take both care of the hardware for replacing that front door, as well as the security and technology implementation that would be needed to ensure school security. And then finally, $15,000 to replace the brick veneer on the middle school. Um, this has started to become damaged because after hours, when it is not being directly monitored by school staff, it is often utilized for uh, skill practice, particularly lacrosse balls, 
And what's starting to happen is they're chipping away at the brick veneer and causing larger holes to form that hole. This is just behind the field or in other areas of the building? No, just uh, along that, that side with the brick veneer. Where the field is? Yes, sir. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> Where the basketball court is? Yes. So would it make sense to put up some sort of backboards or some sort of different surface there? We could take that under advisement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the middle school was built, we didn't have the security system that was in, that's currently in place, and we can do a better job monitoring what's there. In addition, we didn't know that this would happen to the brick mm -hmm. um, until it happened, so we can be more proactive in addressing the youth lacrosse folks or the CT lacrosse folks that use to let them know. Is that discouraged? Very much so. Very okay. Much so. Very much so. Yeah. so the kids are basically yeah. using the wall to throw, they're using the school to throw balls against the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I, I did right. it as a lacrosse player for many, many years, so that's why I ask if it's discouraged. <coughs> and it looks like brick mm -hmm. until it's not. Yeah, you find one spot and I keep working. Right. Okay. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much, and thank you for all you do. Why don't we see if the members have any questions? Anyone? Uh, I did, but I don't know I lost it. Yeah, just give me a second. Oh, I see two lines of athletic equipment. Yes. Well, 6912 and 7380, so I'm, I don't know what the difference is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right here. Oh, next page. Yeah. One equipment, one uniforms? Yes. I believe one is highlighted for equipment, like the sport equipment, the other one is uh, specific to uniforms. So I think, uh, I think I, I could, I compared this with the actual MENAS reports, and I think 6912 is actually athletic supplies, um, whereas 7380 is athletic equipment. And again, I assume that that is different things. But again, it's interesting to note that one is going up by 34%, yeah. the other is going down yeah. by almost 60%. So in regards to uniforms, um, <coughs> when the district changed from the Indian to the Nighthawk, mm -hmm. we had to go off cycle and buy different uniforms for those, for those uniforms that had Indians on them. Mm -hmm. So now we have to get back in cycle with that. And we have, our cycle only accounts for four uniforms to repla be replaced every year, and if that's on a five-year cycle, we never get to all the teams, so we increased to, I believe, four or five uh, new uniforms per year so we can get to every uniform, every team in that cycle. Meaning four or five teams? Teams, yes. Per year? Yep. Got it. Okay. Just going back to the medical insurance for a second, I know this was uh, the increase here, which is 864, is based on the latest we have. But so do we normally get an update based on our claims history? Do we do that how often, or do we get it a second look before the, the finalizing budget? So yes, we do. When do you normally expect to get that? So um, we actually just got a, a most recent one that we're still um, assessing, and then I believe we get another one towards the end of March, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. All right, so if after you assess it, if you couldn't let Ingrid know if there's a change, that'd be, that'd be great. Of course. <coughs> I have another question. <clears throat> Program development, what does that entail? Yep. Just because it it went up like 207%, so can you give us yeah. some? So the program development line, that is actually where, in some areas, we actually managed to decrease it. So you see the dollar change there being $91,300. However, <coughs> that is $100,000 needed for the science of reading legislation. Okay. If I could just step back, I have more questions that are specific to, to the, the line items, but if we could just kind of step back for, for a second and look at kind of the big picture. Um, just for context for those uh, at home that are listening, in the current uh, fiscal year 23-24 budget, the, the Board of Ed uh, had asked for and received all but uh, $250,000. So they currently have a budget of uh, about 61.6 million dollars and that represented a, a 2.5 percent increase over the previous year or 1.5 million dollars so this year again for context this is the first year in which we're facing this double cliff last year the board of ed faced the cliff of no more arpa money 
this year we're facing the, the cliff of both the Board of Ed and the town have no more federal funds to rely on. And I think we're, this board is facing the impact of using temporary funds to actually uh, 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 pay for the costs of, uh, of personnel. So, and as you pointed out, uh, one of the, the largest growing expenditure line items is personnel benefits. So, uh, so I think that it's, it's important to be able to, to understand that your request this year for a $4.5 million increase or a 7.4% increase is, is pretty substantially higher than, than it was uh, a year ago. And um, so, so I think we certainly on this board have to, have to take all of these factors into consideration since we have to serve the needs of the entire community. And so that's just, just for context. Um, in terms of uh, the, the numbers that you frequently present, uh, Patrick, uh, I was very happy to hear about some academic achievement this year that was across the district. And I think that's great to hear, especially uh, following a relatively small increase in, in the budget. So I commend all of the teachers, the administrators, all of the paraprofessionals, all of the parents who have really stepped up and uh, tried very hard to close the gap uh, in learning that was created during the pandemic. And so I, I, I'd love to be able to hear from you, Patrick, your view, your vision as to where we are with that uh, particular learning gap. So we continue to, and I'm gonna take Amanda Gabriel's words, punch above our weight class. Um, we are, and I normally present to where we fall in the DERG, uh, as far as pu per pupil expenditure. We're 15th in the dirt, which puts us slightly below half. Um, we fell four spots from 11th last year. So uh, that being said, and the return we're getting from our, uh, from our teachers, from our faculty, from our staff and administrators uh, <coughs> is tremendous. Uh, I believe my vision moving forward is to maintain and continue this. Mm -hmm. um, we're only asking for two additional positions this year. Of course, um, you know, we would always want more, but we feel that we can maintain our progress and uh, our students' academic, social, emotional uh, gains <coughs> with these two positions uh, included in the budget. Sure, so uh, I certainly appreciate that, and I appreciate you, you know, pointing out that in a year in which we actually had a relatively modest increase in the budget, mm -hmm. um, we were able, you were able to achieve academic progress despite a decrease in the relative ranking of mm -hmm. per pupil expenditures relative to our DRG. So and I'm concerned. Again, I, I, I yeah, always question that. I understand that where you are, and, and I don't know how much longer that that can, can continue. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it eventually will catch up with us. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's a very general statement, but it does, it does worry us. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why the Board of Education, myself and Christian, have come to you today with uh, the increase that we're asking for. It, it not only keeps us steady, but also helps us advance uh, the, the mission, the vision of the district. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. thank you. And then um, in terms of just some basic accounting practices, um, the, the chairman raised the issue of the special education expenditures are listed as gross of anticipated excess cost reimbursement. Um, and so that is definitely a change from last year mm -hmm. in which they were presented as net of those expected reimbursements. I understand that nothing is etched in stone. Um, we certainly have to do that with this board, with MRSA and a number of other uh, sources of revenue that the town receives. Um, but I think that that is something that certainly could be addressed. Um, and this proposed budget also incl includes a $200,000 capital budget, as you just ar articulated, 190,000 technically. But, um, and Again, I was under the impression that when we created the non-lapsing fund in which this board approved on an annualized basis, the surplus funds from the Board of Education, those unused budgeted funds, uh, transferred that money into this non-lapsing fund, that that money would in fact be used to cover capital expenditures. You're so correct. I was led to believe 
when we created the Memorandum of Understanding that would be an either or. Either we created this fund in which you have absolute discretion as to how it's used, or we have a budget that includes a capital budget. It, it, it seems <coughs> counterintuitive to have both, particularly since when we approved the $441,000 appropriation into this fund this year, I think it was in <coughs> September, the very first thing that you did was to allocate a certain amount of money for capital expenditures. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's for, mm -hmm. um, in addition to uh, having a capital projects special fund. So uh, I guess I, I would love to be able to hear what, what the logic was behind the, the decision to add capital uh, back into the budget. Sure, Patrick, before, if you don't mind, if I could, before you respond, please. Of course. Uh, just a couple things. That wasn't my exact recollection, Nancy. Uh, as to that it was an either or scenario um, and we got a, a good faith estimate of where those dollars that we rolled back in August were going to go. Mm -hmm. um, also um, the understanding with two prior directors of finance for both the Board of Ed and the town was that the capital fund would be rolled into the into the one fund so that there's only one fund as far as I know right now. It was. It made sense to have just the one fund, and so I don't think there was anything in the other capital fund, but they were supposed to be rolled together to be one fund. That's a minor point in regards to your question, but um, so the reason for it is uh, piggybacking off Chairman uh, that the 441, yeah, it was dedicated to some capital. However, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the special education line and is so volatile that we do need some breathing room from time to time. And and if students do move into district or we, they require additional services, we can tap that line as well to assist, in our, to assist our students. And there's no guarantee each year that there will be any money placed into that account. Um, it's, in, it's for uh, additional uh, funds that we may realize at the end of the uh, fiscal year, but there's no guarantee to it. This capital line here, is a hard cost. Uh, there's, it, we know exactly where it's going to go. We have aging elementary schools, one being 80 years old, um, that we need to address. Granted, none of those high priority projects are dedicated to that 80 year old building. That being said, we're, um, the capital proposal guarantees us $190,000 to move uh, and to support our buildings. Yeah, and, and again, going back, if you're gonna go back a couple of chairmans ago, then I'm gonna go back to when we did have this capital projects fund and $600,000 was spent on capital improvements within the district. So it's, it's not that there haven't been any capital expenditures in previous years, and there certainly are capital expenditures in the current year uh, in the absence of a, a capital budget. So. Uh, so I think that this is something that, that this board should actually ha have a conversation about. Um, well, well, I'm sorry, what's the conversation about? The conversation is uh, the change from <coughs> having a capital budget this year, uh, the change from last year not having a capital budget to this year having a capital budget as part of the Board of Ed budget. Well, and again, I don't ever recall saying the Board of Ed can't make a capital request when we set up the, the non-lapsing fund. That wasn't my recollection. And look, it's an expensive request here overall with the numbers that you already gave. Mm -hmm. But 190000 in the in the grand scheme of a 60, sorry, $66 million budget is cheap. Now that's not saying we'll, we're, we're going to fund these or we're not going to fund them. It's a request and the Board will deliberate. But in the grand scheme of things, this kind of request, given the facilities that this Board of Ed has for this town, is it's not that much money. Yes, I, I understand. It just winds up being a slippery slope right. uh, in, in terms of uh, you know, allowing this to happen well, this year, particularly when we don't actually have um, the uh, current balances of, all, of the other special funds. Well, I think Christian's promised he'd get those for us. Yes, no, no. And absolutely. the only other it's, it's special fund thing. that would be dedicated to capital would be the non-lapsing fund. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've been very transparent on where that money is going with the Board of Finance. Right. Mm -hmm. If any changes, you will know. So. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and in terms of the line item expenditures, uh, Diane has asked a couple of the questions that I had. Um, but I'd also like to hear a little bit more about the non-certified stipends that appear to be going up by 240%. Sure. 
what's on the very first page of the non-discretionary accounts highlighted in red. Um, the increase that you're seeing highlighted there is making sure that this year these actually items were not accounted for in last year's budget um, are the actual diaper stipends for our paraeducators who have to work with students of those needs, as well as our charged nurse position. I apologize. Where, what, where was that, Nancy, please? So when you go to, uh, in, in the booklet, uh, the VOE proposed budget, uh, non-discretionary accounts are highlighted in red on the very first page of it, the, the middle group, um, well, non-salary payroll, the last item, non-certified stipends, is going from 4000 to 14000 and so that's a 240% increase. Do you see that? <laughs> I don't so, see it on the first page. So, directly after budget highlights, yeah. right down here. Non-certified. Oh, I see. Under non-certified. Yep. I'm sorry. There you go. So, so this this covers nurses. Is that what you're saying? It's the charged nurse stipend, as well as the stipends that are provided to those pair educators who um, have responsibilities that involve diaper changing. But they're not certified. Pair professionals are not certified. Non non-certified. Okay. Um, and regular transportation. Let's see, I think that is on the third page of these uh, non-discretionary accounts. Um, you have a decrease of 7%, and I understand that um, this particular contract has not yet gone out to bid. So how did you go about coming up with that particular number that's $143,000 less? We utilize the projection templates that have been used previously, as well as a reduction in gas prices. It's certainly a line that we can assess again moving forward at, before the budget moves to final referendum with the understanding that we are in the process of um, looking at going out to RFP so that could increase so that that number could be higher it could be not not just lower but actually higher higher than the number got it okay and and I I, I had the question about the uh, technology switches so that's that's helpful um, um, and you mentioned uh, the two new uh, BOE positions, the school psychologist um, and also the <coughs> special ed at Ridge Road. Um, is there an additional school psychologist at, what was it, Monowice? Is that Monowice? Currently? Currently. Yes. So, so there is a full-time uh, school psychologist that serves uh, the whole population at Monowice as we have one full time at every elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do have a TLS district wide school psychologist that serves Monowice, the middle school, and the high school. However, with the number of needs uh, that our students have within this program, uh, this position of school psychologist strictly dedicated to Monowice's uh, TLS program is truly necessary. So you have a school psychologist for the entire TLS program, and now you're having a school psychologist for just the TLS program at Molly's? Yes, and the other TLS um, school psychologists will serve middle and high. Gotcha, okay. Um, and so how many total school psychologists do we have in our town? Oh. Anthony, you know top of your Seven, I believe. Thank you, sir. Seven, and we're proposing an eight. additional one for eight. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and what I see is not included in this is um, the middle school assistant principal position that did not exist last year or this year, and you have it proposed in your list of um, BOE administrators. <coughs> Everyone wants to go to that page of BOE administrators, my favorite page. The administrator of the yeah, so you've got administrator on special assignment, which went from no, 163. No, 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 this is the assistant principal I, I, I know, school. I know, I know. It's gone from 163 to zero, and then you have an assistant principal middle school, which was zero, going to 136. So Correct. I'm assuming there's some correlation between those two. There is not. There's not, okay. No. So. Well, the, the correlation is that I objected to including the administrator on special in the current budget mm -hmm. because that, to me, is actually a legal settlement. It is not actually a stipend. It is not a salary. That individual, and I don't need to go into the details, 
that individual was not actually being paid for any administrative services provided to this school <coughs> district in this current year. And uh, so then that looks like we're actually decreasing this overall administrator uh, expenditure by $163,000 when in fact um, it's, it's just funny accounting. Um, well, but, but my question is more about the addition of the assistant principal at the middle school position. We had uh, a principal and one assistant principal, and now you're suggesting adding a second. Not suggesting. It's, it's in place for this budget year. It just said it shows zero. I think that's why she's asking. It shows zero. Yeah. That's for the assistant principal? Yeah, it shows yeah. zero. The second assistant, right. the 11-month assistant yeah. principal. So that's right. why it looks yeah, new. But it's it's in place this current school year, 24, 20, We have a 23, 24. Nope. I know I'm, I'm Oh, okay. It might be an error in this. It's a, it's um, a but we do yeah. have an a, a second assistant principal at the middle school. So I think there's an error in this layout. And you think it was a budgeted position last yes. year? It was a budgeted position okay. last year. All right. Okay. And then I I guess to circle up Nancy's comment. Mm -hmm. So the administrator, which has gone from 163 to zero, there was no other shift in any other spot in this budget. That individual, that cost is going away. It's going away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, okay. And then, um, so related to this, I, I know that I've, I've raised this issue at, at Board of Ed meetings in the past, <coughs> but I just saw in the patch that there are 31 vacant positions um, that are currently being advertised. Now, it's not, they're not all teaching positions, but uh, I, I'd be interested to know uh, how many of those are actually new positions. Very few, if any, if there are any new positions of those 31, it would be uh, paraprofessionals for students who recently qualified for special education or moved into the district that we would, need, we would need to serve, but those are uh, very minimal, if any. Okay, uh, so the two teaching positions that I did see were uh, a world language Spanish teacher and a special ed teacher. For some reason it said both elementary school and high school. I would imagine those would be two very different. Kinds. We do have one split. Oh, it's split, okay. So are those two new positions or they're no, those that have been vacated and need mm -hmm. due, due to attrition, okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess <clears throat> given the volatility of attrition and retirements and people moving to other, other districts, in 2022 and the current fiscal year, how many budgeted positions were not filled? Again, you can get back to me on this. Okay. Can you repeat the question? So the taxpayers are paying for the budget that you put forth both in 2022, in which we have the actual numbers, and the current fiscal year, 23, 24, um, <clears throat> and so my question is, of those positions that were budgeted and paid for with taxpayer dollars, um, how many were never filled? So you want to know how many positions in last year's budget were not filled, is that the question? Yes. Okay. Certified and non-certified? Both, okay. yes. And the business manager position in which you're you know, trying to bump up the salary, that is something that was vacated and you're trying to refill? It's, it's Correct. Not a, the, not a new position? It's not a new a, position. We are trying to get a higher certifica certification in that position with a better skill set. Okay. And again, you can get back to me on these numbers, but to, to dovetail off the, the question that, that Diane had asked, I'd love to be able to know the number of students in special ed, the number of students in the therapeutic learning program, the number of students in the intensive learning program, the number of students in English as a second language. So, Ms. Okay. Barrett, um, a lot of those numbers we'll not be able to share with you. They're I identifiable. We can give you big picture numbers, but if we drill down, there are so few students in some of those programs that I would not be able to share those numbers with the board. They become identifiable to students. How, how could I ever identify who they are? It's, it's a number. It's, it is. It's a small number. If it's number five, if it's 25. It but if I, if I share that it's five and you know they're housed at X school well, and that 
ex-teacher teaches those kids, oh, and now I know that kid's in there, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to show I, I think I defer to the superintendent on this okay. topic. I think do the best you can. Of course. And, we will give large picture numbers and, yeah. and give as much information and keep Absolutely. asking for what you would like. and we'll, I don't want to we'll make you uncomfortable or no, violate any uncomfortable. privacy laws, for sure. It's about but I, I think for our purposes, it's always useful to understand Understood. bigger than a bread box kind of numbers. And we'll share as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, but share what you can. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm getting a sense here we're drilling down into too much information that's outside of the purview of this board. Potentially. And I, and I think all of us sitting here, um, our students are most important and their privacy and their family's privacy is of our no most, utmost concern. Right. So I don't, I don't want to even potentially reveal anything. Right. But again, to your point, Mike, I think when there is a request for a school psychologist for a specialized program, <coughs> I think it is entirely within our purview to understand how many students are actually being serviced but in Ms. that. Ms. Barrett, the Board of Education themselves know this budget inside and out. Mm -hmm. They approved it moving forward. They know our students and what our district needs, and they have that. They have the full support of that. Okay. Look, for me, I, I understand what Patrick's saying. To me, mm -hmm. the starting point for that is: is it a, a um, is a requirement by the state like the other two costs we talked about? Which it's not. It's a need, and we have all kinds of needs in this budget every year that we address. Um, and maybe we can address this one, maybe we can't. Um, you may not be through an answer, and I want you to ask whatever questions you want, but um, my, I would suggest that um, you've had some informational requests. Let's make sure we get those to Ingrid so that you know we, we know exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you want me to email you, and you email it to Ingrid? Yes. Is that how this mind. works? If you wouldn't mind. Sure, happy to. Right. Can I ask just a procedural question, please? Sure. Um, if there are potentially uh, any adjustments made to this budget, mm -hmm. um, are they targeted at certain areas, or does the Board of Education have the purview to make those adjustments? If you remember last year, Patrick, where they um, you had three, two positions, I think, two or three, three. positions that yeah, were grants couple. that were being converted to full-time mm -hmm. positions. It was a quarter million dollars. And last year, I thought last year was going to be a tough budget. This will be worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, um, there was no no hires across town. And uh, the board and yourself decided you wanted to maintain those positions. So after this meeting, somewhere between that and the, and the first public hearing, you found savings in another location within your budget, mm -hmm. and you um, converted those to full-time teachers. Correct. So um, the same is true here. We may... Thank you think that certain line items are too high or too low, but at the end of the day, you're going to get a number. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I okay. appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, I had a question, too. Maybe maybe Nancy can see the table for just a second. Sure. Happy to. Hey, Christian, just a quick question. I'm no Medicare expert, but the increase is 105000 right? The salary increase here is $1.8 million, and isn't the Medicare tax like 1.5%? So what, why is the Medicare so high? What I can say is we did a very careful audit of all of our staff to look into those particular numbers, but I could directly address that question more specifically. But isn't that just the tax that we pay for Medicare? Correct. Yeah, take a look. I mean, the, I thought the tax was 1.5%, and on a million eight, that's like twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars 26000 right? Okay. Seven point six. That's Social Security. High? Oh, okay. That, the Medicare portion, yeah, with 7.6. Yeah, 1.65, I think, is the Medicare. Yeah, right. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, let's take a look at that. I don't share it, and I have a copy. Uh, I'm sorry, we're all looking at the same. On the second page, so the tuition increase, that's part of the special ed increase you talked about before, right? The 525 is, okay. Uh, and then, I will see the floor to Diane. Um, so repair, or the repairs and maintenance line is going up, and then we also have, um, there's other repairs, like what's the, difference is one just buildings is one just like if something happens if I, I'm looking at 4300 where it says repairs and maintenance and then further down it says other repairs so I don't know I'm just trying to understand the difference what they're for right so the 4300 <coughs> line you're looking at yeah. 
um, where you see the increase of 49.72% uh, or 200,000. Yep. That is probably made, primarily made up of various pieces of tech hardware. Oh, it's tech hardware. Yeah, okay. And, YouTube. All right. um, and, and the, the other, other building? One. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, as far as technology, and I usually ask this question um, about the Chromebooks and how is that like everybody <coughs> has one now? K twelve. I know it was. I know in the beginning, I don't think kindergarten had them. No, COVID forced us into it. All right. So, and then are those leased and they replaced on an ongoing Correct. cycle? Yep. Okay. All accurate. Good to know that. And the other thing that we usually touch on is enrollment, which when I look at in the back, which you provided a nice. Um, grid of the schools and I know for a while it was going down some of them were going down it seems like things are kind of going up it was four it's a four person increase a four student increase right yeah I would say we probably told for the last kind few years yeah because the there's always that discussion that the previous year is it was going down and, and when I looked at it, it looked like things were starting to level but overall up. Green Acres and Ridge Road yeah because of the ID yeah you have ID Yep, yeah. yep, and their their enrollments is higher than even when I was at Ridge, so they're they're continuing to grow. Uh, Monoese continues to grow. Clintonville, I, I think, grows at a lesser rate, but uh, there are one building that does have some vacant classrooms in it, and we are uh, taking our ILS program at the elementary. Uh, it's currently housed at Ridge Road and moving that program starting next year to Clintonville. Yeah, well, I remember when Monoese, because I used to drive by when I was doing daycare. Thank God I don't do that anymore. Um, they built that whole wing, but it, mm. it was kind of nice to see that because we always talked about in the past or looked like things were going down, but things like looks like it's leveling off. I'm glad to hear about the Chromebooks because remember that comment years ah. ago. <laughs> remember, I, I do now every time I sit here. <laughs> the foresight of uh, <laughs> what's going on. I, I, related to that, I, I uh, it looks like at least in terms of that that same chart. First of all, the the current senior year class is about 227 students, but it looks like you have a couple of bubbles, one in the second grade and one in sixth grade. Is that accurate? That is accurate. So do you feel as though that's going to be something that kind of carries year after year in which either there'll be teachers cycling or you're going to see shifting? Yeah, within the yep. buildings for sure. Within the buildings, mm -hmm. got it. Sometimes you have two second grades and the following year you have three second grades just based on um, enrollment. And the way to read this is just whatever is in the, the October 23 column basically shifts down and left by in, one row. In theory, yeah. Right. That's correct. October is our big, the state's big collection. Mm -hmm. That's where we base a lot of our numbers from. Got it. Bob Lurgeen. No, no, all of mine were answered. No, all mine were yeah. answered too. I forgot to ask you about just electricity. Christian, it seems kind of high. Why is it so high? I, I agree. We utilized the template, um, and this is the procedure that we've always used to project that particular cost, which mm -hmm. is a, um, a monthly five year look back, month to month, also taking into account the um, increases that were provided by Uni uh, Champion and United Aluminum, who are providers and suppliers. We can certainly take a look at that. It's just a five-year average look back by month and we utilize that as our projection. Okay, yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Just, just a quick question on, in that same section under um, gas heat. Um, it appears as though there's a $21,000 dollar change, but the percent change looks like zero. And you are accurate and that could very well be a typo. We can provide mm. that percentage okay. increase for you. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on capital or operating expenses for the members? Uh, I just have one question, and again, this is this is more of an accounting issue, and uh, and you might not be able to answer it now, but I think it's always useful to be able to anticipate. <coughs> Um, what the expenditures look like over the course of a year. And what I've seen in the last couple of years is a big spike in the last month of the year. And I raised this at our August meeting in looking at the, the Board of Ed closeout figures for 22-23. Uh, 
the average, as I'm sure you very well know, the average expenditure from month to month is somewhere around four to four and a half million. And in the month of June, it jumped up to like 10 and a half million. So it would be interesting to have some sense for is that something that is a, a, a practice, a recurring thing that we should expect? Uh, because I, I always like to do the year to date in like April or so and try to get a sense for, well, what are you on track to finish with? And I think that it's harder to do if there's going to be this big uptick in June. Um, Thank you. Respectfully, this will, this will be my, my first time going mm -hmm. through that. And so what I will hypothesize is typically that's where we get, begin to, as we begin to close the books, that's where our open POs begin to be closed out and we make various balance transfers to address negative balance lines. So that would be my theory mm -hmm. at that time while you're seeing that, which has been not only past practice, but in other district work that would typically be how you look to adjust those figures to make sure all account lines were accounted for and balanced properly. Um, but we'll take a look at that again. Right. Sure. I, I think the chairman has actually postulated the theory that maybe, uh, you know, there's an uptick in order to pay teachers and other staff members for those months uh, in, in the summer, and then it's kind of in the next budget, you kind of pay yourself back but that remains to be seen. I was just going to jump in if it's okay. Sure, go please. And say that I believe that that's a piece of that because mm -hmm. teachers can choose how they want to take their pay, whether they want it over 10 months or they want it, and, it, and then in June that money is like five more pays their owed throughout the summer mm -hmm. to account for the work that they already did. I see. And then so, so I, I guess. Sorry, excuse me. I guess the question, Christian, is, is that if a teacher picks a lump sum in June prior to our fiscal year end, <clears throat> are you expensing that in the future year, which is when the period would be July, August, right, mm -hmm. or or within the same fiscal year, right? So, right, because the expense wouldn't have been incurred until July or August, right. even though the money went out the door in June, right? I think the other thing I might have said, and I, if I didn't, I guess I'll say it is, I think I might have said it, it's possible that there's simply just a lag in in in, in um, closing out some of the accounts that were sort of basically behind, if you will, in our accounting. That you know, at the end of June, you said to yourself, there could be some open POs. There's always encumbrances that we see that need to get closed out. So maybe it's accommodations. I don't really know. But right, I, I, I <clears throat> again hypothesize both salary yeah. should be current fiscal, but also all those pieces as well. Right. Sure. And if I don't, if I can just jump in really quick. Yeah, this is sure. the sixth year I've been sitting in front of this board, and this is the fourth person that's been sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it's not me, but. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it for <laughs> Well, no, next year, by the way. Right, good point. <laughs> but the answer is. There is the lack of consistency and the lack of a steady person in some of these roles in, in that side of the house. Um, does present delays for us. And with Christian here, there's been a kind of a reframe of, of the HR, payroll, and business departments where Christian, for the, as long as I've been here, he is the first person in that department that has an educational background. He has an administrator certification. He has a superintendent certification where he can add an educational lens to both of those departments. And he's operating with a business manager part-time right now. We're, we're consult using just a consultant at this point. Um, so we've, we're have we without an HR generalist. We we're posted, we're looking for that right now. But so we've kind of put him in this position and then cut his knees off. Um, I think he's doing yeoman's work. But that being said, I do anticipate uh, a catch up in the next year. So um, you know you can hold me to it. It's on camera. We'll talk next year about it. but. Um, and, and I do hope he's sitting next to me next year as well. So I just wanted to provide a little perspective. There's a little change in those departments from years past. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, so we will have uh, the questions sort of aggregated just so you have them. So mm -hmm. any of the members who had questions today, if they wouldn't mind sending them to me, I'll, uh, I'll get them to the board probably via angry. But that way, um, A, um, you won't have to scramble, look at your notes, and B, we'll, we'll make sure that you know we, we're not asking the same question twice. But we'll get those back to you. And, uh, I would say just do the best you can uh, on some of those. Some of them obviously are very important, including the, the reserve questions, which was asked by Nancy and myself early on. Um, 
I don't think there's going to be any more questions from the board. So I'd like to thank you both for your presentation. Thank you all. Yeah. Really thank you for your time. All right. uh, with that, this uh, workshop is uh, adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. <coughs>